I'm Lisa Joy Zagorski with the National Science Foundation. Fish have been talking for years. Don Knotts, Mr. Limpet, Charlie the Tuna, and of course there's Nemo. Yes, fish and sea life, talking, joking, and socializing verbally are no strangers to Americans, at least not on television and the silver screen. But in real life, fish can't talk. Or can they? Sorry, Charlie. Move over. It seems they can and do. Joining me today is Dr. Andrew Bass. He and his colleagues, Edwin Gilland and Robert Baker, just completed research that is detailed in a new paper in Science Magazine. Andy is Professor of Neurobiology and Behavior at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. Hi, Andy. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for having me for the interview today. You're welcome. Tell me about your exciting research. Most non-scientists and scientists as well are unaware of the fact that fish are using sound for the purposes of social communication. So typically, you know, you, you're, most people are aware of amphibians and birds and, and variety of mammals like whales and dolphins using sound for social communication, but we don't realize that fish are doing this as well. And in fact, it's probably prevalent throughout most fishes. And it's important to realize also that fishes are the largest group of living vertebrates. That is, there are more species of fish out there than all the other species of vertebrates put together. Do it's fish okay. make different sounds? So fish make different kinds of sounds depending on the social context, just like many other groups of animals. And so, for example, they'll produce what we call an advertisement call when a male is trying to attract a female to a nest. And in our species that we study, this is known as a hum. Now, fish will also make other kinds of sounds known as grunts and growls when they're in aggressive situations. And the uh, sound that you hear when you listen to these different vocalizations is very different, just as our own vocalizations differ from situation to situation. Do male and female fish make different sounds? Male and female fish do make different sounds. So, for example, only the male, typically in this group of fishes that we've studied, known as toad fishes, only the male is making an advertisement call to attract females to his nest. And are there aggressive and passive fish sounds? Well, there are aggressive sounds that, known as grunts and growls that males will make when they're defending their nest against a possible intruder into their nest. And females will also make these sounds in other situations. Uh, but we don't know as much about what's going on there as we do in terms of what the male is doing. How did you get interested in fish behavior? Well, this goes way back to uh, when I was actually a student in graduate school. And uh, because of the, my graduate mentor, someone named Glenn Northcutt, this was at the University of Michigan, he was just starting to do a lot of research on fish and fish uh, brains. And it just seemed like an incredibly exciting area of study. And I'm also someone who always loved the water as well, whether it's the ocean or a river or a lake. I'm always happiest when I'm near the water. Now, how did you first hear these sounds? Were you on land or were you scuba diving? No, when I first heard these sounds, um, we were using what are known as hydrophones. Hydrophones are underwater microphones. These are the same kind of instruments that scientists use to hear the sounds of whales and dolphins underwater. And we can use the same instrumentation to then hear the sounds of fishes. And that's how I first became aware of them. And I understand your research has broader implications? It does. One of the uh, major findings of the paper is that we suggest that there's a compartment in the developing central nervous system, that is the brain and spinal cord, which gives, ri gives rise to the most fundamental collection of se nerve cells, which we call neurons, that determine, for example, the frequency of a sound or the duration of a sound. And we su propose that, in fact, this developmental compartment is present in the brain of all vertebrates, whether you're talking about frogs, reptiles, birds, or mammals, including primates and ourselves. Is that the first time that this has been proposed? Yes, this is the first time that it has been proposed that this very ancient compartment in the brain of vertebrates probably evolved uh, among early fishes. That is, 400 million years ago, around something like that. Mm. Now, fish can talk. Can they also hear? Absolutely. Fish can hear very well. They're extremely good at this. And fish have an inner ear just like we do. The main organ that you use for hearing sounds is known as your cochlea. Now, you also have another part of your inner ear that's involved in uh, what's known as a vestibular sense, your sense of balance. 
Well, fish have all those same parts that you have in your vestibular part of your inner ear, except they use one particular part of it to hear sounds. Wow, so that seems to open a whole new world for kids and their pets. Now, where do you go from here with your research? Well, what we're beginning to pursue now is understanding more about this particular compartment in the developing brain and what else it might be involved in, in terms of the collection of neurons that drive certain kinds of behaviors. So it may be involved in behaviors other than just vocalization, which is a social behavior. But we also want to begin to understand what the genetic basis might be for how that developmental compartment forms. Dr. Bass, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you for the interview.